So this may be an odd one for us to look at, two different classes of submarines being nuclear and non-nuclear, but I felt for fun it's interesting to learn about the two and get a gauge for what makes them different. The Ohio class is one of the most armed nuclear subs in the entire world, whereas the Gotland sub is one of the stealthiest subs on the planet. And with that, we get this video started. How's it going, everybody? What's up? My name is Dave Wapple, and welcome to FTD Facts Channel, where I look at people, cultures, places, and all that stuff. And yeah, we're taking two different types and classes of submarines and looking at the differences between them. Now, I'm pretty excited for this because I've learned a lot about these two particular subs. And for me, I'm just actually kind of curious which one would destroy the other in terms of a firefight. Well, let's just take a look at a little bit of the history and the differences first, shall we? Now, actually, before I get in this video, if you guys like military content, be sure to check out our playlist throughout this video because I've tailored our military videos to a particular playlist. They'll be in the cards, description box below, and at the end of this video. But let's get rolling, shall we? Let's rock and roll. Now, the Ohio-class submarine has been around since 1976. It was made to replace the Benjamin-class submarine, which many of the nuclear-class submarines were born from the very first nuclear ballistic missile-type submarine known as the George Washington class sub. Now keep in mind, this really came all from the USS Halibut, which was a diesel submarine constructed in 1967. It was eventually converted into becoming a nuclear powered sub that also fired ballistic missiles. As for the Ohio class, however, they were all assembled at the shipyards in Groton, Connecticut. The difference between the Ohio class from its prior versions is that the Ohio class was the type of submarine that America felt they got right. And for that reason, they had a very long life. As a matter of fact, since its introduction, it's been operating for over 43 years. The Ohio class submarine is one of the largest submarine classes in the world, actually sitting at third largest. However, is the largest that America had ever constructed. As well, this submarine was also created so that it could fire the larger nuclear Trident missiles. Her main operation was not only to be an effective sub, but also to be a hidden deterrent capable of first and second stage launching in the event of a nuclear catastrophe with Russia during the Cold War. For the Gotland sub, it's all stealth, using what is called the Air Independent Propulsion System for its engine, along with a diesel engine for non-stealth and regular operation. Original production for this began for this class of submarine in 1992, with the first two being launched in 1995, and by 1996, all three were fully commissioned into Sweden's Navy. So over 23 years. This class was designed by the Cockham's Company and were constructed at the Cockham shipyard in Malmo, Sweden. Now, the design of this sub was based around the Vostergotland submarine class, which were commissioned in 1987. This class eventually received the upgrade for the new type of AIP engine. But interesting enough, the thing that the Ohio and the Gotland have in common in terms of their history is that the Ohio belonged to a family where the nuclear power ability was tested on an older sub. And as for the AIP system, it too was installed and tested on an older NACA class submarine. And as for the Ohio, it was also designed around these new type of missiles. And as for the Gotland, it was also designed specifically around the AIP propulsion system for the first time. However, their function is much different. Besides international operations, the Gotland was made to patrol Sweden's shores and the Baltic, which is partially why it has the name Gotland because it's named after the island that is in the Baltic Sea. All right, so here is one major difference between the two of them, and that is how many of these have been made. There is a lot more Ohio classes than there are Gotland classes. I mean, this is, of course, because the United States has a much bigger military budget. It also has a much larger population in which more tax dollars goes into that military. With that, the Ohio class comes in at 18 of them made in total, in which all of them are still in service today. The Gotland, however, only has three of them, in which all of them are still also in service. Both of these, however, do have plans for a replacement. Sweden has a plan for the new A-26 submarine. Unfortunately, not much is revealed except for a few small minor details and the fact that they aim to have the A-26 class no later than 2022. The Ohio class replacement is the new Columbia class submarine that is planned to enter service in 2031. Actually, one major concern with this new replacement is it has to be delivered on time. Otherwise, they'll be in trouble with submarines. 
According to an article by the Military Times, Navy officials say that the Ohio class is getting dangerously close to not being able to submerge any longer. This is because when a submarine reaches the end of its life, they are not capable of submerging any longer. Submarines pressure systems are made to go down a certain amount of times and unfortunately if you go past that you cannot go down. So let's get over some of the major differences and that is nuclear versus non-nuclear class submarine. What does that entail? With the Ohio being nuclear, it means a couple of things. It means that it is capable of going deeper than most diesel and the Gotland class submarine, at least theorized. It is also capable of going a lot further without having to refuel. As well, nuclear submarines are capable of staying underwater for a much longer period of time. When it comes to nuclear classes, especially the Ohio class, they can stay underwater for generally up to three months. Them having to resurface actually has nothing to do with the engine or the nuclear ability. It actually has to do with food and supplies. Reason for this is most Ohio class only have food for approximately three months. And with that, it should also be mentioned that nuclear engines can produce its own oxygen and water supply. The Gotland class, however, is capable of staying underwater depending on how much liquid oxygen it has, which is roughly about two weeks. Now, many of you will also say, ah, well, that's a bad thing in comparison, but not necessarily because this was a revolutionary system as most diesel engines couldn't stay down for nearly that long. Another major difference is the power. For example, the Gotland submarine powers its 75 kilowatt engines, whereas the Ohio powers its 45 megawatt engines. Power is one thing, but let's also talk about some of the stealth aspects. This is where the Gotland shines. The problem with nuclear is it does make quite a bit of noise. The Gotland has most of its machinery on rubber dampeners to reduce vibrations. This is how it stays invisible to sonar and other ways of detection. On top of that, the AIP system is not only more quiet, but it also has a hull that is coated with a material to minimize it from being detected even thermally. And considering we're on kind of the power train, let's look at how fast these things go. Obviously on the surface, submarines go much slower, so let's look at underwater. The Ohio class can go anywhere between 20 to 25 knots, whereas the Gotland goes approximately 20, maybe even 25 knots. However, using this AIP system, unfortunately it has to slow down to around five knots. Weaponry, however, this one is totally different. The Ohio class, it just defeats in this area. Overall, the Ohio has a huge range with its SSBNs. It can fire 24 of these Trident missiles, each one of them loaded with eight 100 kiloton missiles. Basically, think of the Trident as a missile with a bunch of other missiles inside that can break off and take out their own targets. The crazy part is the range for these is so far that it can be almost anywhere in the world, hitting a range of approximately two thirds of the entire globe, equaling approximately 7,400 kilometers or 4,600 miles. The Ohio class compared to the Gotland also does have two versions. There is the SSBN, which is these ballistic missiles that I talk about, but there's also the SSGN, which is guided missiles, in which it carries 22 tubes of 154 Tomahawk missiles, which is made for combating ground forces and other ships. So in terms of damage output, this is where they absolutely demolish over the Gotland, but let's take a look at ship-to-ship -ship combat, which one would possibly survive. The Gotland submarine has four times 533 millimeter torpedo tubes, having approximately 12 torpedoes. They also have two tubes of 400 millimeters, having six of these type of torpedoes, and as well, approximately 42 naval mines. However, for their 12 main torpedoes, these ones are extremely dangerous. Known as the Type 62 torpedoes, they have a range of over 40 kilometers and go speeds of approximately 40 knots or 74 kilometers per hour. Nothing can outrun these types and they are generally classified as submarine killers. The Ohio class, however, has four times 533 millimeter tubes as well. However, they use the Mark 48 torpedoes, which have a speed greater than 52 kilometers or approximately 28 knots. However, unfortunately, they only have a range of approximately five miles, which is nothing compared to the Gotlands. And getting right near the end, let's take a look at size. Now, like I said, the Ohio class is the third biggest submarine in the entire world, and it is the largest that America has ever made. 
It's big, coming in at a length of 560 feet by 42 feet in the beam and a draft of 35.5 feet. Whereas the Gotland is much smaller with a length of 198 feet and 2 inches and a beam of 20 feet 4 inches and a draft of 18 feet 4 inches. Because of that, the crew size is much larger on an Ohio class, coming in at 15 officers and approximately 140 enlisted crew. The Gotland is much smaller, having 8 18 to 22 officers and approximately 6 to 10 seamen. And to finalize it all, let's take a look at the cost. Now, you're probably going to assume the Ohio class being bigger, having more stuff, it's a lot more expensive. You'd be right. This is because the cost for an Ohio class comes in at 2.97 billion US dollars as of 2018, whereas the Gotland is roughly around 100 million dollars, being way cheaper. So there's your differences, guys, between these two. I know it does seem kind of weird that we put these two together, but I think it's also really interesting to learn about two subs at the same time. Whether or not they're in the same class, it doesn't really matter. You guys got your education on both of them, and that's the important thing. However, I want to know, which one do you think would win in a firefight? Let me know down there in the comment section below. And if you guys got a recommendation for another differences between this and that, feel free to leave it down there because we love listening to you. My name is Dave Wapple. Hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here. Check out our cool playlist, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye. All right, so here's the playlist that I was telling you guys all about. Feel free to check them out. Other than that, leave that comment that I said, hit that subscribe button, and yada, 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 all that lovely stuff. You guys have yourself a fantastic day, and I'm going to do something else. Bye!